Hello. In today's video lesson, I'd like to share with you um, some techniques for working with graphing absolute value functions, <coughs> specifically uh, when we see that the coefficient on x is anything besides 1. Uh, written in this form, the, it's a little bit tough to figure out the graphing because we might have been trained to think that this, because of that plus 6, is going to shift the absolute value graph to the left 6. Reasonable to assume that. However, um, if you put negative 6 in for x, we find out that the end result is not 0. So there is no vertex at negative 6, 0, which means we have to rethink this a little bit. So what's happening here is the 2 and the 6 are working against one another, um, so the shifting is going to be adjusted or modified because of the 2. So I'd like to show you how to piece this together. The first thing to do is to look at the, uh, every absolute value as really half of two different lines. The first line is where we remove the sign and leave everything alone, and the second is where we take everything opposite inside the absolute value. So we get negative 2 minus 6. So when I graph y equals absolute value of 2x plus 6, I'm really graphing half of this and half of that. Now I'm not going to use these to graph. I'm going to use these to check my answers in just a little bit. To graph, I would like you to do one thing. To whatever the coefficient on x is, factor it out of both terms. So here the coefficient is 2, so I factor it out, and then we have x plus 3 in the parentheses. And because 2 is a positive number, I could take the absolute value of 2 and just bring it out of the absolute values. Now I can go back to what we learned prior to today. That is, this is going to be an absolute value graph shifted to the left 3, whose slopes are going to be plus or minus 2. So I identify the slopes and the leftward shift, and there I actually make a point that's shifted from the vertex, or the origin, to the left 3. There's my point. And then I'm going to use my slope of 2 and negative 2. First I'm going to go forward 1, up 2, and draw a line. And then I'm going to go back 1 and up 2, and draw a line. And then, here's where the money comes in. Earlier in my work, I uh, actually found uh, each of these equations just by writing without the absolute value and the opposite of everything inside the absolute value. Now I look, I labeled this 2x plus 6. Now just to make sure, I see is the y-intercept positive 6? Yes it is. Is the slope positive 2? Yes it was, that's how I made it. And the same thing here, is the slope negative? Yes it is. And is the y-intercept negative 6? Well, I can't see it there, but I can count over 1, down 2, so now we're at negative 2, now we're at negative 4, now we're at negative 6. So even though it doesn't show on my graph, I can count my way back and make sure that negative 6 is the correct assumed y-intercept. So um, that's basically it. And then just to make sure that my thinking is right, because even though I do this and I do this and there's so many different ways to cross-reference, I can still make some sort of bonehead mistake. So there's two things we could do to check. The first is I went back one, up two. So checking on the downward line, I find a point that's clearly there and I have to make sure that negative 4 is a solution to the equation, negative 4, 2, and it works. But the more definitive result is to take the equation that was given to you as it was given and put that into Desmos, and then once you have the graph, you can take a couple of the points. First of all, match the two. They look virtually the same. But the other thing is I could take um, a couple of the points, like four, negative 4, 2, and verify that it's actually one of the points on the graph by just typing it in in the Desmos. So... Uh, that's the general uh, gist of the process. And just to show you, this works even if um, 2 doesn't go evenly into 6, like here, if you have 2x minus 5. First things first, I know that I'm going to get two half lines. One of the lines is going to be y equals 2x minus 5, just leave it alone. And the other is going to be y equals the opposite of 2x plus 5, the opposite of everything inside the, the absolute values. I will not use these lines to graph. I will use these lines to check the graph once I'm done. Now, I go through here and take out the 2, and when I do that by factoring, I end up with a fraction inside. And if you look, you distribute, you get 2x minus 2 and a half times 5. Well, that's 2 and a half times 2 is 5, so it works out. I'm going to take that 2, move it out of the absolute values, and now I can identify the slopes just like before, plus or minus 2. This time, though, we're not moving to the left, we're moving to the right, and we're not moving right 5, we're moving right 2 and a half. So once again, I produce my graph, I've got the vertex, I count a slope over 1, up 2, I count back 1, up 2, and I make my points, draw the lines, label the points, label the lines. Once again, what I'm doing to make sure this is right is first verifying, does this line have a slope of 2? Yes, I made it to be so. Does this line have a y-intercept of negative 5? I believe it would. We're supposed to go uh, back 1, down 2, so now I'm at 1 and a half, negative 2. 
Then I go back a half down one, so now I'm at negative one, negative three. And then I go back one down two, and I'm at zero of negative five. So it counts. And then this counts as well. Um, because the y-intercept is positive 5 and the slope is 2. So now everything is checking everything else. And if there's any doubt at all, even just in a once in a while, just to prove you know how to do it, I type this equation exactly as given to me into Desmos and make sure that the points that I found are valid. I hope you find this helpful. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.